This is a how-to video on analogous inspiration. I know when I watch how-to videos, I really like to skip the beginning and get straight to the point. So if you're like me, feel free to jump ahead. There's a list of time codes at the bottom of the screen. Just scroll down and click on the thing you're interested in and you can skip right ahead. Those of you who wanna start from the beginning, let's start. So analogous inspiration is a design research method from a company I greatly admire called IDEO. IDEO also sometimes calls it analogous experience, analogous experience, analogous inspiration, tomato, tomato, they're basically the same thing. So analogous inspiration is a design research method where design researchers will completely change their context in order to get a fresh perspective or inspiration on a given topic. The best way I know to explain analogous inspiration is just to tell people a few examples. So here are a few examples. So if a design research team wants to better understand beauty products, they might go and visit and have an experience in a lumber yard. If the team wants to understand the nature of anesthesiology and going to sleep before a surgery, they might go and take a scuba lesson together. If the design research team wants to learn more about hospital emergency rooms and improving that experience, they might go and experience a NASCAR pit crew. All of those examples, by the way, are totally real. So is this sounding a bit bizarre? That's good, because it should. Analogous inspiration is a really strange and kooky design research method, and that's exactly why I chose it for this tutorial video. My name is Katie Shelley, and I'm a master's student here at Hyper Island in Manchester, England. And this video is actually my homework. I think analogous inspiration is one of those things that seems really easy and straightforward when an expert explains it. Let's say someone like Matt Cooper Wright, an interaction designer at IDEO. But then if you try and go and do it yourself, somehow it's not so straightforward anymore when you're actually breaking it down into steps. It's easy to get lost or a little bit confused or just totally give up. And that's why we're here today to learn how to do analogous inspiration right. Analogous not directly related to your topic. Inspiration. The goal is a eureka moment and not hard data. So Matt Cooper Wright, the guy I mentioned just a few seconds ago, he's a designer at IDEO and an expert in design research. And he came to give us a couple of talks and work with us here at Hyper Island. And he kept saying this phrase over and over on his first day with us that I really liked. You need to draw a line back to the brief. I really like this. It's really a nice mental image, I think, for understanding analogous inspiration. Just a skinny dotted line going from your brief to your research. Analogous inspiration doesn't tie back into the brief with a big fat piece of rope. It's not sturdily anchored down. Analogous inspiration isn't like a survey or a usability test or other more typical research methods where the rationale, the justification that goes back to your brief is really clear and straightforward and heavy and sturdy. The connection back to the brief is almost ready to float away. All you have is a skinny little dotted line, just one or two little similarities between the two things. And that can definitely be scary. And yes, it is a bit risky, meaning it's possible that you could have zero meaningful insights from your analogous research experience. But like most things, with high risk comes the potential for high rewards. Analogous inspiration has the potential to give you earth-shattering insights, the kind of disruptive, innovative stuff that no run-of-the-mill eye-tracking test or tick-the-box customer survey could ever dream of getting close to. Okay, so I hope now you're sold on analogous inspiration, you're feeling ready to try it, you understand that it's risky and a little bit out there, but those qualities are exactly what makes it worth doing. First, we need to talk about a pitfall. So here's the pitfall. It's the temptation to pile on all the themes of your brief onto your one nice, clean, analogous research experience. Remember that example from the very beginning of this tutorial, the one about the team of design researchers who went to visit a NASCAR pit crew because they were trying to understand the hospital emergency room? NASCAR pit crews are highly specialized. They work with lots of complex equipment and they're under intense pressure. So there's that skinny line running back to the brief. You've got on one hand NASCAR, team of experts, complex equipment, high pressure. And on the other hand, you've got hospitals, team of experts, complex equipment, high pressure. They're similar, but not too similar. So this nasty pitfall that I really want you to understand, 
here's how it could happen in that situation. The design research team could say, oh, well, NASCAR drivers, sometimes they crash and get injured, right? And, you know, they have to go to the hospital, right? So we're studying hospitals, so why don't we also look at what happens when a NASCAR driver gets injured and they need to go to the emergency room? That connects to our project, right? No, 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 no. Don't clutter it up. Resist the urge to make too much sense. Remember the skinny dotted line. Don't make it a thick, sturdy line. Don't make multiple lines. The two contexts should be similar, but not too similar. Remember that the objective of analogous inspiration is to trigger a eureka moment. It's just like that time when George de Mestral, a Swiss electrical engineer, went for a walk in the woods with his dog in 1941. When he got home from his hike, he noticed all these little seed pods and burrs stuck to his dog's fur. And as he was peeling off the seeds from his dog's fur, a light bulb went off in his brain. Velcro. The guy invented Velcro because he went for a hike in the woods with his dog. The moral of this story? Switch contexts, switch your headspace, and get that eureka moment. So let's get to the nitty gritty. Here's how to do analogous inspiration step by step. Step one, get a piece of paper and fold it into thirds. For the sake of this example, let's choose a real life topic. Our topic in this example will be, say, charitable giving. Step two, break down the topic into a series of super simple interactions. Think about what it's like to go through that experience from beginning to end. The first step is probably to just find out about the charity. Then maybe next, you've got to establish trust with them before you give over your money, right? Next would be receive a thank you letter maybe. And then the last step perhaps would be joining a network with other donors to the same charity. Step three, on the middle third of the paper, rewrite each item from your first list in a more simplified way. Finding out about a charity simplified is just find out about something. Establishing trust with the charity a simpler way of saying that is just build trust. Give money to the charity. A simpler way of saying that is just give money away. Receive a thank you letter. Simplification of that is just get thanked. And join a network with other donors to the same charity. A simplified way of saying that is just join up with like-minded people. Step four, now we make the final list. Turn each simplified interaction into a totally new thing. Go crazy and broad. Extremes are good in this case. So find out about something. How about discovering a new band that you love? Build trust. Maybe jumping out of a plane? Skydiving lesson? That sounds like a pretty good example of trust building to me, so let's write that down. Give money away. What's another place where you do that? First thing that comes to mind for me is a wedding gift, so let's write that down. It doesn't have to be perfect, by the way. Just write it down. Get thanked. How about a Japanese tea ceremony? It's the first thing that comes to my mind. It's an example of one person expressing a ton of reverence and appreciation for another. So let's put that down there. It's a little weird, but weird is good. Join like-minded people. How about multiplayer online gaming? You know, like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, Rift. These online games are about people coming together who are insanely passionate about a cause. Killing dungeon monsters, joining guilds, procuring cloud serpents, etc. That one's nice and weird. Let's throw it in there. Step five. Choose the thing from this last list that seems the most exciting. I can't tell you exactly how to make this choice. It's an art, not a science. I would say just go with your gut and choose something that sounds like it would be fun to do. Once you've chosen an analogous experience, go do it. Observe without bias. Try to withhold your judgments. Take notes. Remember, it's not enough to just think about the other thing. You have to actually go and do it. Experiencing something in real life is a totally different thing from just thinking about it. So make sure you actually go and do it. And you can go with your whole team, that's even better. Also, you don't need to be able to predict what the insights will be before you go. So don't worry about that, just go with an open mind. Step six, once you've gone and actually done your analogous inspiration experience, you may find that you've already got light bulbs and eurekas going off in your brain right away. If that's the case, you can totally skip Step six, if it's not the case and you need a little bit of help getting the ideas out, you can make another list. What are the pain points from experience one, your original brief topic? List them down. Now go for experience two. What were the pain points there? How were they handled by the people you went and observed? Write all that stuff down. Now look at the two lists and see if any pain points from experience two could potentially work 
in experience one. If you've still got no light bulbs, you can do the sort of reverse, and instead of listing pain points, list pleasure points from both experiences. What were those moments where people were particularly delighted, happy, engaged? Compare them, what can you learn? If you've still got nothing, well, maybe sleep on it for a night. Even if your analogous research doesn't generate a eureka right away, maybe the benefit it will bring you is just a mindset or an angle, something more subtle that you can keep in the back of your mind throughout the rest of the design process. That's it. I hope this tutorial was super helpful. Please let me know what you thought. I'm a work in progress myself, always open to iteration and feedback. Find me on Twitter, enter Katie, and let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching.